among God's children today. Amen. And in the presence of the Holy One of Israel. Amen. You have your Bibles. Uh, I'd like for you to get your Bibles and go with us to St. Matthew's Gospel this morning. St. Matthew's Gospel. St. Matthew's Gospel this morning. How many knows what today is besides Sunday? Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday, amen, amen, amen. Talking about the last week of Jesus' life before he would be crucified as a martyr for you and for me this Sunday morning. You know, I always think this time of year and... Um, you know, I know the Lord loves us, but when we read over these scriptures and we see what all he went through for you and I, it makes me love him more and more and more. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew chapter 21 this morning. Matthew chapter 21. I'd like to read verses 1 through 11 this morning. Verses 1 through 11. It should be a familiar to you guys this morning. Amen. Amen. When you get there, say amen with me. Amen. amen. Matthew chapter 21, beginning with verse number 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. And this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and yet, and they set him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from the trees. And strode them in the way, and the multitudes that went before and that followed, crying, saying, What? Hosanna. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What was the next one? Hosanna in the highest. And when they were coming to Jerusalem, and all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Would you pray with us and pray for us this morning? Father God, I love you this morning. Lord, I give you glory, honor, and praise and blessings. Lord, I realize this is a privilege this Sunday morning to stand here and proclaim what thus saith the word of the Lord. I pray now, Lord, prepare our hearts, prepare our lives, O oh, Father God for the precious reading and study and preaching of the Word of God this Sunday morning. Realizing today is a day, Lord, that you have prepared, that you have made, that we should rejoice and be glad this Sunday morning in it, my Lord. Acknowledging our Lord and Savior. And I pray now, Lord, that you would touch every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that sits under the sound of our voice this morning, Lord. And most assuredly, I pray, Lord, that none would leave here like they came. In Jesus' name, let them leave made whole. Let them leave delivered and set free, saved by the mercy and grace of Almighty God is our prayer. And Lord, when everything is said and done and is finished, Lord, I'll be careful to give you all the glory. The honor and the praise for it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Shake off your hands. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. 
and amen. God is good this morning, isn't he? He is a good God this morning. Amen. Amen. As we begin to look this Sunday morning on the triumphal entry, and, and I named or titled this message today, The Man on the Donkey. The Man on the Donkey. When we begin to look this Sunday morning, Jesus comes to Beth Page on the Mount of Olives. He sends two of his disciples, you know, we just read this, and uh, he's asking for the donkey and then the colt, if you will, amen. And he said, if anybody asks you, tell them the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. And all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. I want you to notice verse 5. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. When we see this this Sunday morning, it was predicted. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, and verse number 9. I want to read this verse to you. This fulfilled many things throughout the Word of God, but here's one of them. As it was predicted by Zechariah. And Zechariah 9 and 9 said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass, upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now notice, if you will, 500 years before Jesus would ever come to this place, it was predicted by the prophet Zechariah that the king would come into town. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the old daughter of Zion would shout, and the daughter of Jerusalem, Behold, the king cometh unto thee. Aren't you glad that the things that take place in God's word are not coincidental? Y'all, y'all help me this morning. It's not something that happened by accident. It happened because God's word declared hundreds and hundreds of years ago that this would take place. Can I stop and tell you this morning, if God's word says it, you can bank on it this Sunday morning. What about that, church? It was not only predicted then, but it was predicted by Isaiah. In Isaiah 62 and verse 11. I'm just giving you some references here. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, save ye, or say ye rather to the daughter of Zion. Behold, here we go again. Thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Isaiah predicted it as well. Why? Because he didn't want us to. To be surprised. And you know, you know, uh, uh, pastors this morning uh, and brothers and sisters, I'm not surprised by what happens in our world. Because a lot of the things is found in the Word of God. If we'll read it, as the preacher was talking about in Sunday school, if we'll read and study the Word of God, you will find out that these things must take place. So as the prophet predicted this 500 years before Jesus Christ would come, he said, tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh. Can I just stop and interject one thought here this morning? Can I say to you in the 21st century church, the king is still coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said the king is still 
coming. Amen. And not riding upon the foal of an ass this time. He's coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is the name that will be written on his vesture and on a thigh. His name will be written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming to fulfill his word to us this Sunday morning. But let's look, if you will. Here is the last week of Jesus' life on earth before he would be crucified. But I want us to take a look at it. He's riding into Jerusalem. He's been brought the coal, the coat, the, the coat, if you will, the ass. They put their clothes on him and they say, set him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from tree and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, say it again to me. Hosanna. Come on, you can do better than that. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of God. David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! 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 In the highest! Well, y'all looking at me like some of you just woke up. Salvation's coming! He's going to save his people! That's what it meant when we cried. When they cried, Hosanna. He said, Zachariah said, Thy salvation is coming. Riding upon a cold, the fall of an ass. He's coming. Mahasa. What are you telling me, preacher? He's coming. We need to be ready, children of God. He's coming. You can play it off. You can make fun and make light of it. But I'm telling you, Zechariah predicted it 500 years, telling the people the Messiah was coming. Salvation was coming. How long have we been preaching the same gospel? And people still have not changed. They remain the same. Zechariah said he's coming. Now understand, when the multitudes that went before him cried saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Understand, some of this same crowd, five days later, and I'm going to get there in just a little bit, would shout, crucify him. Crucify him. Huh? Are we not living in the same kind of society today? Are you with me? I I, I was talking to some folks not long ago that say they're Christians. But yet just this past week, some folks have come to me saying different things to me about so and so. And I happened to hear it myself the other day. My plan is, Brother Small, to talk to this gentleman next week. Because he goes to the gym with me. And people are looking at our lives. Huh? You see, salt water and fresh water can't come out of the same fountain. I'm trying to stay with this right here, but I got to just share this. You know why? The Bible said in John 1 and 11, he would come unto his own, and his own received him not. Everybody's not going to receive what we're preaching today. Everybody didn't receive what Zechariah said, but the fact of the matter is, it's still going to take place, whether you believe it, or whether you don't, whether you accept it, or whether you don't. The fact of the matter is, this Bible is true, and the word of God is forever true and it will come to pass. It's sad. Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not. Some of this same crowd that cried, Hosanna, salvation has come. 
would cry, crucify him. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, the city was all moved, saying, Who is this? I underlined those three words in my Bible. Who is... Can I ask you who he is this morning to you? Huh? I'm going to just preach my, take my time this morning. I, I want to ask you, who is this? You see, they didn't understand the prophecy that Zechariah predicted. All they knew was Jesus was coming into town. They didn't understand the full capacity. The leadership of Israel didn't understand the full capacity of who it is. I'm persuaded to believe with all the technology... With all the education that we have in the 21st century church. People still don't understand who he really is. Can I get an amen from somebody? I said this 21st, with all its technology, with all the knowledge and the wisdom that we have today, people still don't understand who this man Jesus really is. To many, he's a figment of the imagination. To many, he's somebody in the past. Huh? But I'm telling you, and I'm asking you rather this morning, who is he to you? Huh? Something I'd like to share with you this morning, who he is to many throughout this Bible, from Genesis to the closing out of Revelation. Can I read them to you? The question saying, who is this? Is the question of all ages this morning. Jesus Christ is God. In Genesis, he's the creator. In Exodus, he's the deliverer. In Leviticus, he's the sacrifice. In Numbers, he's the sanctuary. In Deuteronomy, he's the word. In Joshua, he's the victor. In Judges, he's the judge. In First and Second Samuel, he's the anointed one. In First and Second Kings, he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In First and Second Chronicles, he's the temple. Are you with me this morning? In Ezra, he is the restoration. In Nehemiah, he's the wall. In Esther, he's the unseen but guiding hand. In Job, he's our sanctification. In Psalms, he's our song. In Proverbs, he's our wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he's the preacher. In the Song of Solomon, he's the groom. In Isaiah, he's the virgin born son. In Jeremiah, he's the balm of Gilead. In Lamentation, he's the sorrowing savior. In Ezekiel, he's a wheel. In the middle of a wheel. Hallelujah. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in a fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's an altar call. In Joel, He's the promise of the Holy Spirit. In Amos, he's the judgment. In Obadiah, he's the vengeance. In Jonah, he's the presence of the Lord. In Micah, he's the rule of Israel. In Nahum, he's the holiness of God. In Habakkuk, he's the vision. Are you still with me? Somebody shout amen. In Zephaniah, he's the day of the Lord. In Haggai. He's the Lord of hosts. In Zechariah, listen, he's the holiness under the Lord. In Malachi, he's the son of righteousness who arises with healing in his wings. Who is he to you this morning? Can I read on? In Matthew, he's the king. In Mark, he's the servant. In Luke, he is the man. In John, he is God. In Acts, he's the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. In Romans, he's the justification by faith. In 1 Corinthians, he's the resurrection. In 2 Corinthians, he's the ministry of reconciliation. In Galatians, he is faith. In Ephesians, he is the one sealed. Can I read on? In Philippians, he's the exalted one. In Colossians, he's the head of the church. 
In 1 Thessalonians, he's the rapture. In 2 Thessalonians, he's the victory over the man of sin. In 1 Timothy, listen, he is sound doctrine. In 2 Timothy, he is power, love, and a sound mind. In Titus, he's our pastor. In Philemon, he's a savior of slaves. In Hebrews, he's a better covenant. In James, he's the healer. In 1 Peter, he's our redemption. In 2 Peter, he's all things that pertain to life and godliness. In 1 John, he's love. 2 John, he's love. 3 John, he's still love. In Jude, he's the common salvation. In Revelation, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is our all and all. Oh, I feel him this morning. I ask you this morning, who is Jesus to you, my friend? Huh? Is he just a figment of your imagination? Or is he the Christ, the son of the living God, Mary's baby, the savior of the world, my savior, my redeemer? I wonder this morning, who is Jesus to you? The crowd back then didn't understand who he was. And the crowd that we live in today don't understand who he really is. Can I get a witness from somebody this morning? I'm telling you this Sunday morning. You see, Zechariah said, thy king cometh. He's bringing salvation to the people. But also Jesus fulfilled three things in this passage of scripture around verse number eight. Can I tell you what them three things is in verse number eight? And a great multitude spread their garments in the way, cutting down their branches from the tree and strode them in the way. He fulfilled Passover. What do you mean, preacher? Three things that happened. Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. And he fulfilled all three. Matter of fact, here they are. At his death at Calvary would fulfill the Passover as he would be the Lamb of God who would give his life. Secondly, the first of unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread, spoke of the perfect body of Christ, which would serve as the perfect sacrifice. And because it had never been tainted by sin, it was perfect, sinless, and he had a spotless life. Thirdly, he would fulfill the feast of the first fruits, would testify of his resurrection. Three days after his crucifixion would serve as the first fruits of the coming resurrection of life referred to as the rapture of the church. Hosanna! Hosanna! To the son of David! Hosanna! Unto the highest! Somebody shout his praise and give him glory this Sunday morning. Hosanna! Thy salvation cometh. You can't be one way or the other. You got to be in or you're out. You're either for him, the Bible said, or you are against him. You're either with him or you're not with him. What about it, church, this morning? I'm going to ask you another question. Where are you today? I'm taking my time in preaching today. Who is he? And where are you at today? Are you with the crowd or are you with Jesus today? Huh? Because I've seen a lot of them getting in predicaments and they're no longer with Jesus. Amen. Hello. Peter denied him, did he not? Huh? I find folks that say they're Christians today, Sister Kay, and when they get under the pressure of this world, they deny him as Savior and Lord. Some of the crowd that said Hosanna would be the same ones that would cry crucify him. Only five days prior to his crucifixion, they're shouting salvation comes. Predicted by Isaiah and Zechariah and many others that he was coming as king of kings and lord of lords bringing salvation unto his people. Can I tell you this Sunday morning, everything that he's done in the word of God and everything he's doing right now is to bring salvation to his people. Are you with me this morning? 
Huh? Let's follow Jesus a little bit further this morning. Let's flip on over just a little bit further this morning, if you will, to Matthew chapter 27. Now understand, he's riding into Jerusalem on a colt, the foal of an ass. You know, one writer said it like this, and, and, and this is just an opinion, I guess. Said the donkey that followed into Jerusalem was Israel. They saddled him up, but there was no rider on him. One writer said that was Israel who rejected the Messiah. Huh? And then he said, the writer said, the colt, the foal of an ass, is those that were grafted in the Gentile church who would accept him as Savior. And Lord. what about that this Sunday morning? Eh? Huh? Yes, that, that the donkey was that of Israel, God's chosen, but yet those rejected. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But unto the Gentile church, they reached out and embraced him as Savior. And Lord, aren't you glad of that this morning? He came and gave everything for you and I. I'm not going to take time to follow all of his steps this morning. I wouldn't have time to cover it all. You know this story. But five days later, after his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, he would be despised. He would be rejected. Huh? He would be beaten, would he not? The same Jesus To the same crowd that stood by five days earlier and said, Hosanna is now standing by watching them say, Crucify him. We're living, and I'm going to go back to this one more time, my brothers and my, we're living in the same world today. When on Sunday, people want to say, Hosanna. Hosanna. And then on Monday, they want to crucify him. Are y'all with me, church? Are you with me this morning? The words may not vividly come out of your mouth, but the lives that we live, our lifestyle, the way we present ourselves, the way we carry ourselves, tells our story better than our mouth could ever tell our story. I feel him something now. Amen. What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us that people are watching our lives. Reason, I, I, mm, mm. preachers. The reason people, no more people are coming to church anymore because they don't have confidence in the children of God anymore. Amen. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. Huh? That's exactly right, preacher. They see how we live, how we conduct our lives day in and day out, and they say to me, "If that's a Christian, then I don't want to be this same young man that I'm going to go to next week, and I'm going to call him outside, and I'm going to say, listen, uh, now you claim to be a brother in Jesus Christ, uh, but the words that are coming out of your mouth, uh, amen, uh, is not is not proclaiming to a child of almighty God and listen to me my brother you say you are you need to clean up your talk amen I can't help what they're teaching at your church I know what this Bible teaches and this Bible says that kind of stuff will send you into a devil's hell let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth huh what are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us this Sunday morning. Let's follow Jesus a little further this morning in Matthew chapter 27. As Jesus stands before the trial of Pilate. Huh? Y'all know these stories. I'm not going to go into all the details this morning. Huh? Notice what, what the governor said. And the governor asked him in verse 11 saying, What? Art thou the king of the Jews? Here we go again. And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. Huh? Now understand he's been portrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver. Huh? What did Jesus say? The same one that dippeth his hand with me in the pan is the same one that shall portray me, betray me. Huh? That's why I'm telling us this one. Be careful who you walk with. Huh? Be careful who you yoke up with. Hear me. Huh? 
Listen to young people. Be careful who you yoke up with. Huh? Because everybody don't believe the same way you believe. Everybody don't live the way we live, Brother Ant. Amen. Uh, come on, somebody ought to help me preach this morning. Amen. I'm preaching with a dry mouth this morning. I got me on antibiotics, but I tell you what, I'm going to still preach anyhow this morning. Hallelujah. What are you telling me, Pastor? I'm telling us this morning, uh, we need to be careful who we associate ourselves with. Uh, hallelujah. I told one of my brothers this week as we were talking, uh, I said, we got to be careful who we associate ourselves with uh, because people will look at them and put us in the same boat along with them. Can I get a witness this morning? Uh, can I get somebody to shout, glory? Hallelujah. We got to be careful. As he stands before Pilate Pilate hands Jesus over to be crucified Around verse 15 huh? Who you want to release Now understand five days earlier Some of that same crowds They're shouting, chanting, Hosanna Now five days at his crucifixion At his trial They're shouting crucify him And now they're saying, let Barabbas go. He's a notable prisoner, but we want to let him go. Huh? What shall we do with this man that is called Jesus, the Christ? What are we going to do with him, boys? Huh? Now realize he's the Savior of the earth. He is salvation coming in on a donkey. I'm talking to you about the man riding on a donkey this morning. He's the king of glory. And now he's fixing to be a crucified savior. Uh, go with me just a little further over in the scriptures to verse 27. I'm skipping a lot, but you can read in between there if you will. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and they watched, stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Understand what Jesus is fixing to go through with. Could I read you this, mess, this, this here just for a moment? The method of torture and execution used by the Romans to put Christ to death. At a crucifixion, the victim usually was nailed or tied to a wooden stake and left to die. Crucifixion was used by many nations of the ancient world, including Assyria, Medi, and Persia. Alexander the Great of Greece crucified 2,000 inhabitants of Tyre when he captured the city. The Romans later adopted this method and used it often throughout the empire, their empire. Crucifixion was the Romans' most severe form of execution. So it was reserved only for slaves, listen, and criminals. No Roman citizen could be crucified. Crucifixion involving attaching the victim with nails through the wrist or with leather thongs to a cross beam attached to a vertical stake. Sometimes blocks or pins were put on the stake to give victims some support as they hung suspended from the cross beam. At times their feet were nailed to the vertical stake and the victim hung dangling by his arms. I'm talking to you about that man on the donkey this morning. The blood could no longer circulate to the vital organs. Only by supporting themselves on the cedar pen could victims gain any relief. But gradually exhaustion set in and death followed. Although usually not for several days as victims, listen, had been severely beaten. They would not live this long to hasten death. The executioner sometimes broke the victim's legs with a club. And they could no longer support their bodies to keep blood circulating. And death quickly followed. Usually bodies were left to rot or to be eaten by scavengers. To the Israelites, impalement was the most disgusting form of death. Matter of fact, Deuteronomy 21, 23 said, He who is hanged on, who is hanged on a tree is cursed of God. 
Yet the Jewish Sanhedrin sought and obtained Roman authorization to have Jesus crucified in Mark chapter 15, verses 13 through 15. As was custom, he, he charged against Jesus and then he was attached to a cross and offered a brew to deaden his senses, but he refused in Mark 15, 23. You see, there was no need for the soldiers to break his legs and to hasten death. You see, by the ninth hour, according to Mark chapter 15, verse 25, probably by three o'clock in the afternoon, in only six hours, Jesus was already dead. Now picture this with me this morning. I didn't go into all the vital details this morning. But I want you to get a description of a man riding on, on the, fo- the colt, the foal of an ass, five days earlier. And now, five days later, he's being deserted. Can I stop and interject a thought here? Don't think that people are going to follow you all the time. I could ask some of you to raise your hand. Have you ever been deserted by your close friends and colleagues? And hands would go up in this place all over this building. Because we've all been there. We've all experienced those same things. Where we've been deserted. Jesus was deserted by all of his colleagues. And now I see him being beaten. With 39 stripes. Do you understand that the the cord, the whip that he was beat with, those strands that would hang from that cord or that rope, whatever you want to call it, had jagged bones, sharp as razor blades embedded in that rope. So every time it would wrap around Jesus, it would cut to his organs. Can you imagine 39 times Who is this man, Jesus? Isaiah declared his visage would be so marred that he would be unrecognizable. What are you telling me? The crown of thorns they played on. Did you know they were two to three inches long spikes? And they pushed him through his skull. And Ryder said his head swole from the pain, from the agony. Unrecognizable. Couldn't even be recognized by his family and his friends. And I asked myself, why would a man that rode this donkey into Jerusalem do this for me? (laughs) Why? Why do you do that for you? It's because God loves you. God loves you. He loves me. And he was willing to go through every pain. The crown of thorns planted on his on his head. The lictor's lash from the whip. And then he was tied to a cross and made to drag it down through the city. What are you telling me, preacher? Get a picture of him this morning. You've seen pictures. He's bloody. The blood's running through his eyes, down his face, dripping off of his body. And here he is dragging a cross. I studied on that cross. It was a nine-foot wooden beam. Can you imagine nine-foot wooden beam? A man that has been beaten to a bloody pulp and now is dragging a cross. Headed up to the place of a skull to Golgotha. Can you see him this morning? Can you picture this man, Jesus, the Savior, riding in five days earlier on a donkey? They're shouting, Hosanna! Salvation has come! And now they're crucifying our salvation. Is 
dragging a cross till he gets to the point of, 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 of exasperation till he can no longer carry the cross and thank God for a man named Simeon that came and was commanded help him and he helped him carry his cross and then as he gets to the place of a skull as they spit upon him and mocked him and said hell king of the Jews what you gonna do now king The songwriter said he could have called 10,000 angels <laughs> to come and deliver him. But he didn't. Why, 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 preacher? Because he loves us so much that he was willing to take your place, point that finger at you this morning, and me on a place of Calvary. He's bloody, he's bleeding, he's weak, he's exasperated. Uh, Simeon helps him pick up his cross, and they finally get him to the place of a skull, uh, and they've got a hole dug where the soldiers pick up the cross with Jesus on it and drop it. Can you imagine nails driven through your hands uh, and through your feet when they drop that cross? It rips the flesh. The pain and the agony that must have set in that moment that they dropped it in the ground. I'm sparing you a lot of the gruesome details that I could go into this morning. Huh? Understand that they said according to the Romans the only way he could catch his breath was to try to push up. So his blood could circulate because the longer he hung by his arms dangling... The blood could not circulate to his organs and to his heart. What are you telling me, preacher? Somebody said Jesus died of a broken heart. If you study history, his heart actually ruptured. It bursted on the inside of him. Why, Lord? <laughs> and he would do this and yet we yet we every day despise him and reject him a man that would do this for me and for you man I tell you I wish the world would serve him Hollywood wants to wear a cross around their neck uh, symbolizing the cross. They don't know what it is uh, that they're really wearing around. It's an emblem of death, suffering, and damnation. They don't understand it. The same way the religious leaders five days earlier didn't understand who he was. Today's society don't know who he is. We've got a little head knowledge about him. And for the majority of our world, that's all they've got. It's a little bit of head knowledge about him. Huh? We see Jesus hanging on a cross now. He's lifted high, he's stretched wide. And I see him hanging there from 9 a.m. in the morning to 3 that afternoon. I see the merciful Savior. I see that man riding in on a donkey. And yet now he's hanging between two thieves. One on his left hand and one on his right. And even with his last few breaths, that thief said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus pushed up one more time so his blood could circulate and he could catch his breath and said, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. This day, Lord. This day, son. And the other said, if thou be the Christ, 
Won't you save yourself and save us at the same time? And the thief said, this man has done nothing worthy of death. Nothing. But you and I are deserving of death. Now notice, it's about 12 noon. Things are beginning to look a little bleak. I could go on, I could read you more and more in there this morning, but you can read all the story. One o'clock passes, two o'clock passes, and at three o'clock something happens to the man that rode in on the donkey. He's coming to bring salvation. Understand, understand, grasp this if you will. He rode in on a donkey bringing salvation. Now he's hanging on a cross to bring us salvation. He's bringing us salvation. Three o'clock, he drops his head. It says, Eli, Eli, Lama Bashatanai. Being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he dropped his head and said, It is finished. And he gave up the ghost. His heart ruptured in him. Glory, glory. I'm talking to you about a man that rode in on a donkey, hung on a cross to bring salvation to all. The Roman soldiers come by that afternoon. Remember, their day is from sun up to sundown or sunset. And by sunset, every thief had to be off the cross. It's the feast of the Passover. Remember I told you, Jesus fulfilled all three of them. They had to be off of the cross. And they come by the first thief and found him still alive. And they break his legs. And he can die quick. Does the second thief the same way, but something happens when they come to Jesus because the writer said in six hours Jesus was dead. And they found no response. So one of the Roman soldiers cast a spear into his side and out came the blood in the water from a ruptured heart. I'm sparing you a lot of the details this morning. But I come by to tell you who he is this morning. I'm trying to explain to you who he is. I'm trying to describe to you who he is this Sunday morning. And then I ask myself, why would you do it for me, Lord? Because it was predicted. 700, let's, let's go back more than 500 years this morning. Let's go back 750 years to the prophet Isaiah. Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Isaiah 53, 1. And for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. Listen, here it is. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty. That we should even desire him. He's so marred. He's so messed up. He is despised and he's rejected of men. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God and afflicted. Isaiah said he would be wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Huh? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Listen. Yet he opened not his mouth. 
He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is done. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Neither was there deceit found in his mouth. I'm talking to you about a man that rode in on the donkey. To bring salvation to all humanity. And then can I ask, and then we can walk up and walk into this church and walk out of this church without ever praising him. Are y'all with me this morning, church? Huh? I'm leading you up to something. Huh? You won't get the resurrection today. That's next Sunday. I'm trying to tell you what happened in the last five days of my Savior's life. Huh? He did it because He loves us. And yet we turn our nose up at Him. And yet we can't find breath. And I'm going to say it one more time. We can't find breath, Brother Kim, to praise Him. Huh? And a man done all this for me and he done it all for you. And we can't find a little bit of breath in our body to, to shout, Hosanna! Kanda, Isitama, Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna in the highest! Salvation! He has come! Salvation! He has come! We ought to be we ought to be shouting it to the high top right now. We ought to be praising him. Stand all over the building and worship God. Worship him that rode on a donkey on the cold the fall of an ass. Man that hung between two thieves. For your redemption. For my redemption. My. Oh, Shata. Hallelujah. What about it this morning? What about it this morning? Roman's spear went into his side. Out came the blood and the water. Somebody standing by must have had a drop of blood fly on them from the Savior's side. How do you know that, preacher? Because he looked up and said, Surely this was a son of God. This was the man. This is him. This is the Redeemer of Israel. The Savior of the Gentiles. I don't understand how we can mock him. Make fun of him. What are you telling me, preacher? Philippians 2 and 8 said, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Why? That's number one. He was willing to suffer for our sins. Secondly, to reconcile us to him. Yeah. Colossians 1 and 20, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by them, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Willing to save or suffer for our sins. Willing to reconcile us to himself. And thirdly, to know his peace is what he wants us to have. In Ephesians 2 and 16. And that he might reconcile both under God in one body. What? By the cross. 
having slain the enmity thereby. That's why he did it. That's why he did it, Brother Kevin. He chose to suffer for our sins. That we may be reconciled unto him and that we may know the peace that surpasses all understanding through the death of the cross. I hope these words will ring in your ears throughout this week. And I've just scratched the surface of his death to lead us up to next Sunday morning. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us this Sunday morning. Make sure. Make your calling and election sure this morning, would you? Huh? Make sure you know that you know that you know that you know that you've been redeemed by his blood. And that you can look up as one of the servant men that stood at the foot of the cross and said, surely this was the son of God. This world today that we live in makes light, make fun of my Savior. They use his name in vain. They poke at him, they make fun of him. It should break our hearts. It should break our hearts as Christians. As the spear went into Jesus' side, every time they, they poke and make fun of my Savior, it ought to go into ours. Glory, glory, glory. I don't know about you, but I love this man that rode into Jerusalem on that donkey. I love that man that hung on that cross. And after he said it is finished and he dropped his head and he gave up the ghost and they took him down that afternoon because nobody could be on there. It's the eve of, the, of, of, of Passover. And nobody could be on a cross. They take him down and then they lay him in a borrowed tomb. And I'll say this one more time, and I don't want to go no further this morning. Somebody said, why was it barred, preacher? Because he didn't need it permanently. Hey! What about it, church of the living God? What about it, child of God, this morning? <laughs> it was barred because he didn't need one permanently. I'm stopping here this morning. Come on, Sister Kay. I'd love to take another couple of hours and finish it, but I won't. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My, my, my. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If this message don't affect you, if you can't shed a tear, there's something wrong with you, my friend. This ought to move every heart of every individual in this place. I shouldn't have to ask for an altar call. We ought to be jumping out of our seats and running down to this altar and praying and crying out to Almighty God this Sunday morning. Huh? Play, my sister. What about it this morning? You've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus. You ought to be down here at this altar this morning with us. It's not about red, yellow, black, and white. It's about God's people that love Him enough to cry Hosanna to Him. That cry Hosanna to Him. What about it? Would you come this morning? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? My, my, my. 
The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. My, my, my. Oh, glory, 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 glory. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. The blood that fell on that servant at the foot of the cross is flowing in this place today. And he's saying, I can redeem you. I can save you. I can heal you. I can set you free this morning. If you're here and you're lost this morning, let the blood fall upon you today. Let it save your soul this Sunday morning. Let it deliver you, my friend, this Sunday morning. He's coming. Isaiah prophesied 750 years before it would ever happen. Zechariah prophesied 500 years before it would ever happen. But it took place just as they prophesied it would. Somebody said he's coming back. I can tell you he's coming this morning. I don't know the day, nor the hour, nor the time. But he told me to be ready. Told me to be ready. You ever had anybody come by, call you up on the phone and said, I'll be at your house at so and so. Be ready. And they arrive and you're not ready. I wonder, are you going to be ready when he comes? Who is he this morning? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? As we pray around this church, who is he? Who is he to you? Who is he to you? Who is he to you? Pray, church. This is just a time between you and God. Pray this morning. Pray. What about it this morning? What about it? Beautiful play it, sister. Trust only in his word. Kneel at the 